Hello, friends, foes, men, women, children, and undecided brand new genders. You're not watching the Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Ellen, Jimmy Oprah, or the Jimmy Trevor Noah Show. This is Valuetainment Presents, The Right Show. And do we have the right episode for you? Today, I give you a tour of Mar-a-Lago. And guess what? It was fantastic, folks. Sam Bankman will not be freed anytime soon. McDonald's Big Mac prices skyrocket and Gavin Newsom falls out of an airplane. It's all happening right here, right now, on The Right Show. Let's go! Hey, today's episode is going to be a lot of fun, but we're going to kick it off with a little football. So let me ask you, who is your favorite football player? Please put it in the comments. The reason I say that is we hit the streets to find out what the smart women of Washington, D.C. know about the famous gridiron sport. And uh, we were surprised what they did and didn't know. Take a look. And they cross the end zone with the football. That is a? Uh... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a quarterback. No. A running back? Oh, uh... Oh, ah! oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. Uh, a touchdown? Yeah. A striker? It's a strike in soccer, maybe. Yeah, I don't. But in football, it's called a touchdown. Touchdown! Oh. You know that one? Who is dating a football player right now? Big news. Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey. Kelsey or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. Did you know who he was before that? Oh, heck no. Taylor Swift? Yes. Taylor Swift? Yes, you got it. <laughs> Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Everybody knows that. So it appears Taylor Swift is the most famous football player for many of these women. They Nobody missed that one. They didn't know what a touchdown was. They didn't know what a first down was, field goal. But Taylor Swift, that has brought 3 billion new viewers to the table. Very exciting stuff, folks. And a very exciting thing happened to me. I was sitting there minding my own business as I normally do, wasn't causing any trouble, and a text message came in. You've been invited by President Trump to see... The premiere of the movie Police State, brought to us by Dinesh D'Souza. He, he makes a lot of movies, documentary style of films. Very interesting stuff. You might have heard of 2,000 Mules, I believe is what it's called. And then now we have Police State, where they warn you about what's coming. Okay, Some countries, they don't allow freedom of speech. They don't allow you to make your own medical decisions. And we see kind of like the seedlings of that happening right here, right now, in the United States of America, whereas uh, maybe... When the pandemic first kicked off, they expected everyone that was a nurse to go and help people, put on double masks, put on a pair of underwear over your face and help people. Then as soon as the Boosty Boost came out, they said, if you don't get three of these, you are going to lose your job. And who did they fire first? The same people that were the first responders that protected us for the first six to nine months of the pan sketchy. So with that said, I got invited to Mar-a-Lago. Many of you have never been. And this is like dream come true. I always thought one day I'm going to go there, if not the White House, the second White House, Mar-a-Lago. So this is what it looks like for those of you who haven't seen it from an inside tour. Got my red tie for Mar-a-Lago, folks. It's going to be a fantastic time at one of the greatest resorts, believe me. Those are nice socks, baby. Kevin Sorbo, Terrence K. Williams. And there's the man himself and his beautiful wife, Dinesh D'Souza and Debbie. Now look at those right there. I wanted you to look at those napkins. So during the premiere, everybody was very busy watching the film, and it's a fantastic movie. You have to check it out. So I went to the bathroom, and I noticed the people that were in there, there was kind of, you know, those guys that are in there that kind of help you, the ushers or concierge-type people that hand you a little bit of spray for your hand. This, well, they had all left. Those, those napkins right there, probably $5 each, right? They've got the little Trump embroidered logo on them. I may or may not have stolen a handful of them. Okay, when you come to my condo, 
you're going to walk in, you're going to use my bathroom, and you're going to get the exact same napkins that were at Mar-a-Lago, folks. Top notch, believe me. So definitely try to come over to my house and you can wash your hands in style. Moving right along. Sam Bankman Freed. Now, first of all, why does a guy have a hyphenated last name, Bankman Freed? Okay, it's not like Bet David. Bet David is the house of David, very famous, but Bankman slash Freed sounds like he's the product of a couple different marriages and he kept both his dad and his stepfather's name. Now, this guy was involved in one of the worst Ponzi schemes of all time. One for our generation. Take a look at this mad scientist. He did a cryptocurrency Ponzi scheme where he kept asking for more money from other investors and then paying some off when they requested to cash out, but there was no real money being made. FTX, I believe, folks, that's the name of it. So take a look. Sam Bankman Freed will be spending potentially decades in prison. I'm going to read this to you. He once ran the world's biggest cryptocurrency exchange. He's been found guilty of fraud and money laundering, and that is at the end of a month-long trial in New York. The jury delivered its verdict after less than five hours. That's pretty quick. It concludes a stunning fall from grace for the 31-year-old former billionaire, the Crypto King, who is now going to face decades in jail. Currency exchange FTX was once valued at $32 billion, and now it's bankrupt. $8 billion in customer funds went missing. This is one of the biggest financial frauds in American history. Wow. So if you put any money into FTX, I feel really sorry for you. Now, I will tell you, Sam Bankman Freed was one of the biggest donors to the Democrat Party. And DNC is not giving any of that money back. Hundreds of millions of dollars to the Dems. Why is that? Well, kind of like what I just talked about with police state. Big government wants big donations and will leave you alone as long as possible. But sadly, his corruption was so big that even the Democrats will not bail him out. A fall from grace because this is what he used to look like when he first made his billions. Happy little dancing creepy dork. Take a look right here. How does it feel to be the richest 30 year old in the world? Well, pretty cool. All my clothes I own are in a backpack. The book's doing good, better than a copy. So if you wanna be a billionaire, uh, I always thought being a billionaire would come with like a James Bond suit and maybe a Aston Martin and a cool look, but he looks like a mad scientist and now he's wearing a suit, an orange jumpsuit. We'll be back with a whole lot more of The Right Show right after this. Speaking of cryptocurrency, what would you do if you were in this position right here? This gentleman owns $321 million in Bitcoin but he can't access it because he lost his password. This guy's name is Stefan Thomas, and he has two guesses left before his crypto wallet shuts down completely. Let me explain what that means. Uh, he basically put his password on something kind of like this, all right? And this is what you do if you don't want to keep your crypto. Right now, I have a few billion dollars on here. I also forgot my password, but you keep your crypto right here, and you have to remember your password to get into it because some people don't want to keep their crypto on the online exchanges. They can get hacked. Well, he forgot the password. He got this crypto uh, wallet back when it was only at like $10 or $15 a Bitcoin. Bitcoin is now up to somewhere between twenty dollars and $50,000 a Bitcoin, depending when you're watching this, which means his thousands of Bitcoin times $30,000 each, $321 million dollars his wallet allows him to make 10 guesses he's guessed eight times wrong it could be as something as simple as not a capital letter he forgot an exclamation point so i'm gonna find out right here what would you do in this scenario you have the wallet you know it's worth 321 million and you have two guesses left Whew, that is a tough position to be in i know for me i would uh probably not guess anymore until maybe like hook up with Tim Cook and Apple, be like, can we prac can we do so can I pay you guys half and you guys hack into my thing? I know somebody out here can hack into this, all right? The one thing I wouldn't do, leave it with Hunter Biden. You'll never see that money ever again. Moving right along, if you're interested 
and you want to learn, you go to college. Because when you come out of college, sure, you spent a lot of money, but you're that much smarter. You have the intellectual edge on all your peers. And your degree is very worthwhile because now you're more marketable. Well, that was the case until recently. Now, universities are just pushing different humanities studies, sexuality studies, race relations studies, and now we've hit an all-time low, Taylor Swift studies. University of California, Berkeley is launching a Taylor Swift course in 2024. And on that syllabus will be her songbook. Now, it's not just Berkeley. Berkeley's following a trend. Other colleges are gonna make this, for some, required reading, okay? How ridiculous is that? We read this article. The class has a wait list for the fall semester. That means so many people are like, that's what I wanna take. This is like a lightweight course. I get that there's like a blank space, maybe they wanna write your name, but look. The course joins a series of Swifty courses ranging from literature to social psychology at schools like Ghent, University of Texas at Austin, New York University, NYU, and Stanford, plus Berkeley. All these universities have offered, or are currently offering, a course focused on Swift's lyrics, discography, and her potential impact. Call me old-fashioned, okay? There's nothing Taylor Swift can teach me other than, potentially, how to date the wrong guy. And I don't want that course. Here we have another thing. Swift's whiteness is worth addressing in these classes, says McCausland especially when fields like literature are already so dominated by white creators. This course hasn't even been offered for less than a month and already the radical left are going, mm, it is a little racist, she is a little too white. They're gonna put up a statue of her just so they can tear it down. I'm asking you right now, parents, I know you've got kids in college. You find out your kid is not taking science, technology, engineering, math, but just signed up for Taylor Swift and the Tupac course. Do you continue paying for college or do you cut off the funds? We're gonna find out what parents have to say right here in the comments. We'll be back with a whole lot more from The Right Show right after this. Prices are going up at McDonald's. Hold on to your wallet, folks. You might know that California with greasy Gavin Newsom is trying to make your greasy food go up in price. Why is that? Because Gavin Newsom, he wanted to raise minimum wage. Uh, no company should be paying uh, only $12 an hour. Should be 18. How did you pick that amount? Okay. So now you raise the minimum wage. You tax businesses more. You allow theft under $900 with no penalty. And people that come rob your register, rob your store, beat up your staff, get into jail and get let right out. What's that going to do? It's going to make your Big Mac cost a whole lot more. Take a look at this. Some places have the McDonald's Big Mac meal set at $18. Now, that is not $18 for this new version of the Big Mac that's kind of like a Chili's burger with bacon and avocado. This is the same Big Mac that you grew up on, $4.99 meal. It's medium fries, medium drink, no free refills, $18 in Connecticut. $16 in New York City, and coming to a store near you, price hikes. Take a look at this. Raising prices in California, New York, Connecticut is coming after state increases the fast food workers' wages. The president is going to add to this. This is not going anywhere anytime soon. Biden is promising to raise the income tax rate to 28%. This will be a tax on certain corporate stock repurchases and it will project to raise the budget $237 billion in the next 10 years. The reason I'm showing you all this, the government can make any decision they want to raise prices for businesses, but businesses don't just take it in the shorts. They come back and charge you more. So whenever Democrats cheer, yeah, get those corporate people, they're greedy. Just know that you're gonna be paying for that in the long run. And what happens at McDonald's now? I've been to multiple McDonald's where there's not even a person taking your order. You go up to a keypad and go bloop, 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 bloop. And you just sit there and order your burger and someone else brings it. So yes, they raise the minimum wage for three or four people, but now they fired those four people and you get to order from your own iPad. It's not just McDonald's coming to a business near you, even bars. 
are breaking into the action. Gone are the days where you have a nice bartender who would talk to you. He was quick with a joke. He'd light up a smoke and say, man, what am I doing here? Remember that Billy Joel song? The reality is that bartending machines are now taking over. Any job where there's a person and the customer, they're trying to get rid of the person because of the minimum wage laws, because of the benefits, because of the lawsuits. And a good bartender might accidentally uh, overpour a few times, right? Maybe you overpour four or five times a night. Maybe do that all year long. And that's thousands of dollars in loss to the bar. Well, now they've got robo bars. Check it out. For those of you who are just uh, kind of listening and not watching, we have a full automated bar. The person ordered their drink online, no interaction with any human being. The arm went and grabbed this, that, flipped it over, mixed it, put it on the conveyor belt, right to you. Now, you're not going to get a little extra. Your, your drink is going to be made scientifically. You're not going to be able to argue, hey, give me some more vodka in there. I'm not even drunk. And who knows if they're going to be over-serving because some alcoholic can just sit there and have 14 claws serving them at all times. So do you think this robotic bartending service is a good idea or do you think this is going to be the end, completely the end of great bartending as we know it? Put in the comments. I got to tell you, these people are tripping and nobody is tripping more than Governor Gavin Newsom. Little karma, he's raised minimum wage, he's charging McDonald's so much, they're passing it on to you. Bartenders are gone. They shut down your business. They boosted your arms up. They took away your freedom of medical choice. And this is what happened to him as he came out of the airplane. They're not showing this on the media. They're very embarrassed. But here Gavin Newsom takes a little page out of Biden's playbook. Watch. And down goes Frasier. <laughs> hmm. Wow, wow, wow. So that guy is tripping, but let me tell you something. That is just a sign of what's to come. If you keep voting radical left-wing values and think you're a good person, you're just trying to help everybody, you're gonna land flat on your app. We'll be back with more, stick around. The Sphinx, one of the majestic wonders of the world. We've all seen it before, take a look. Now, how did they build this? They thought slaves, they thought workers, they thought masons, they thought, well, maybe there was just different pharaohs that forced this labor on people. Turns out the wind might have been responsible for forming most of the Sphinx, and they saw the wind had done most of the work, and then they just kind of added some features to it to make it look cooler. What am I talking about? Well, new studies show that the work centered on replicating those unusual rock formations found in the desert might have resulted from wind blowing and dust and sand. The Great Sphinx could have originated as a yardang that was then detailed by humans into the form of a widely recognized statue. So to do so, the NYU Applied Mathematics Laboratory took mounds of soft clay and erodible materials and mimicked the terrain in Egypt. How cool is that? So this is what I'm telling you guys. What if this was just a big rock and the wind blew right over it Looks kind of like Donald Trump, doesn't it? And that formed most of it, and they just added eyes, ears, and paws. That's how they got the Sphinx. What do you Sphinx, folks? You think that's how it happened? Put it in the comments. Now, one of our final stories of the day, and I think you're gonna love this, is the radical left has never done really anything of value, but they will tear down whatever they can. And none more recently than birds. Did you know birds are offensive? That's right. The left looked around and said, what can we be offended by today? Aha, birds. 
Never thought of this myself. Here we have a story here. Racist and offensive bird names need to be changed, so they will be renaming the American birds. All right? Article goes on to say, Many birds sport names that come from white men with objectively horrible pasts. And according to the group Bird Names for Birds, a grassroots initiative has been advocating for change. Having their names memorialized in this manner is similar to building a statue in their honor, the group argues. So, this is where we're at, folks. It doesn't matter that maybe a man was the first to spot this bird, took the time. You know how hard it is to track birds in the 1700s, 1500s? No, they went back and looked at those people's past from the year 1700 and said, do I disagree with the way they lived their life back then? They didn't have Wi-Fi. They didn't have airplanes. They didn't have toilets. They didn't have running water. They were just out there just taking notes and maybe they did something that the left doesn't approve of in 2023. So those bird names must go. Teach them a lesson. That means we're going to have all different kinds of bird names coming from us. This will no longer be the black bird. They want to call it the African American bird. You got to be kidding me. That is ridiculous. This will no longer be the peacock. They want to call it the pepinus. That is out of control. They're sitting here saying this cannot be a penguin. We have to call this the Obama because it's black and white. And now they're calling for roosters to no longer use the phrase cock-a-doodle-doo. Figure out a new way to say it. If that bothered you, it also bothered me. Stick around. We'll be back with a whole lot more. cock a doodle doo We'll be back. Hey, this is a fantastic story. CNN got kind of hoodwinked again. This woman claimed she was a interpreter, sign. They paid her big bucks to help kind of go through what the speech was saying. But as we know, I would say like 10% of the time these are fake people. And it's even funnier to know that they just totally made it up. Watch. There's some clues that she's not doing a real sign language. It's very short. Keep your eyes peeled. Go. It's happened again. Another sign language interpreter accused of signing. <laughs> we can't show more of that because we don't want to lose our channel and be demonetized. When your sign language interpreter does one of those, I won't do it. It'll become a meme. Uh, then you know they're up to no good. Folks, did you have fun so far? The right show is full of interesting stories, things you need to know about, and things that you should just probably laugh about. We always end on a laugh because comedy is needed now more than ever. Every Monday, I post a comedy clip on Instagram at KVON Comedy. Be sure to subscribe. This was last Monday's true story, doing a little crowd work at the uh, wonderful comedy club. And a woman, she said that her job was labeled non essential. Comedians were also labeled non essential. I said, What was your job? She said, I was an esthetician. Now, if you know a little bit about estheticians, that job is essential, and I proved it here. What was your amazing job they called non-essential? Yell it out. An esthetician. An esthetician. Do you think that's non-essential? I love estheticians. If they're not working, then all you women have hairy okay? Yes. That is essential that you have clean, waxed bikinis. I don't want the government telling me what kind of I'm allowed to have during the pandemic. But I bet when the pandemic ended, business was booming, wasn't it? <laughs> That's right, ladies. So if you're hairy right now, go right here to this young lady. You'll do it between shows. I got two shows tonight. We're going to set up a booth in the back. She'll... If you don't have your products, I got duct tape. We can just rip hair off of the canvas right here. This mall is a family mall. We don't do stuff like that. But on the fourth floor, they don't know what we're doing up here. We're waxing seats tonight. All right? Yeah, and we ended up doing that. We did very well. Helped out a lot of people in need. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Folks, I hope you enjoyed that. This is the news for people who really don't like the news. We are not just a comedy talk show. We are a support group for normal people. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe. Support Valuetainment and all that we do. We have multiple channels. And be sure to tune in each and every week to The Right Show. We love having you here. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.